Okay, I will get Cheryl out. Figure two or three for each.
I was practicing it this morning. I'm like, that works. <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> if you have a praise book, I've asked you to find song number 34. While oh, I catch my Okay, just take a moment and breathe in and breathe out. That's okay. I got to do it too. But we're here to worship the Lord, amen? amen. We're in our Heavenly Father's house. So it works. But He's with us everywhere we go. That's right. The Holy Spirit dwells us when we ask the Lord to save us. This song is Psalm 34 in your praise books. It's called Father, I Adore You. It's just simply, Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you. We say the same to Jesus and His Spirit. Sing it with the church. Father, I adore you. Lay my
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Sounds so good. Amen. Today's June twentieth. Happy Father's Day to you all. God bless you and appreciate those tuning in and listening by radio, television, web, all those things, social media. God bless you. Um, like I said, it's good to see everyone here this morning, those visiting with us. Bless you and thank you for being with us today. Um, just want to send a shout out. Prayer for our Reverend Nick and Kathy Marika. He's coming home soon. Hospital. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. It's closer now than ever. Amen. And pray for Dr. John and Judy Simmons, and he's here with us today. Amen. There's Brother John in the back. Keep them in your prayers. Diane Martin as well. Uh, Debbie Russell, she's here with us today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen. God is good. Linda Woody, I talked to her the other day. She had good uh, knee surgery for the fourth time. I think it is. Bless her heart. And um, been through a whole lot, but we really appreciate her and just keep her in your prayers. And I appreciate that. Those that are traveling, also those that listen from far away, is the UK, those in, in uh, the United Kingdom and Egypt, a couple other places that tune in. Amen. And we also ask you to lift up all our local churches in your prayers and missionaries as well. And uh, shout out to Tom and Marie Giles and on their health. The Lord bless them as well. Uh, birthdays, we had a bunch this month. <laughs> Woo, I can't keep up with all of them. Katie Duff Camels, June 12th. Ann Duff hers is on the 9th. I think, I think I got that right. And Don Anderson's was 18th. Amen. Y'all give her a shout. And, amen. Happy birthday. Uh, Lee Wilson's is today. Oh. Tina's husband. That is so awesome, brother Lee. You know him. Happy birthday. Great father say yes. Amen. <laughs> and I know we had some other. If you, got it, if you know they're here, let me know. Uh, Anita Clark. Hers is on the 30th. So. End of the month. And we had some anniversaries too. Charles and Crystal Chetham on June 2nd. And Larry and Suzanne Bethay was on the 13th of June. Asked you to keep in prayer uh, Reverend Sidney Wade and his family, and pastor of his brother, and the Hackett family as well. And um, pray for Mary Bowley and the, and the Jarena family because they're all under the weather. Some of this could. <laughs> and uh, but ask you to keep them in your prayers uh, for healing. Amen. So we won't be having our youth uh, church service later this morning, but we're glad you're here because it's Father's Day and we're looking forward with spending time with the Lord and each other. Amen. Amen. But uh, so at this time, I'm asking the deacons to come forward uh, for our morning tithes and offerings. If they would, please. Everything we do in here today, 
be for your glory and your honor. In your precious name we ask all of this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen. Keep Loretta May in your prayer as well. And Patsy Blanche, I'm understanding she's doing a lot better. The lady we've been praying for down in Georgia, right? Just daughter. So thank you for your prayers. And I keep Vicki uh, from the Bank downstairs in uh, your prayers as well, please. I appreciate it. Well, at this time, we have a Father's Day presentation. Woo! Woo! Yes, we want to know who you are. <laughs> and you better point him out, ladies and gentlemen. And, oh, am I saying anything? Oh, I don't know. Who's no. saying something? I'm talking. You're talking. I'm, we're talking. Anyway. Let, let, me, let me tell y'all something while we're talking. <laughs> Yesterday, I heard as a man, the most awful thing yes. I have ever heard said to me. Read it, didn't you? You read it. In the 36 years of marriage, <laughs> you would have thought it would have been, I don't love you no more, or I'm leaving you, or something like that. But no, uh uh. The worst thing she told me was she said, I can't find everything I need in the Dollar Tree. We got to go to Walmart. Now. <laughs> My whole world fell apart. <laughs> found out we could get it all in the Dollar Tree, yes. so I'm much better now. Thank yes, you. yes, much better now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that was, and then I got to thinking, you know, I don't want to go to Walmart either. So, <laughs> oh, they're walking. Yeah, he's, uh, to my dear husband, I can't outdo what he did Mother's Day. He's just too awesome, I'm going to tell you. I'm very blessed. So I want to shout this out to him, a little poem I had seen, and to all our dads. You may not be saying this every day, and I do say this every day, I really do, but I want to thank you for all that you do, for your thoughtful ways, and most importantly, for the most wonderful and amazing husband, father, grandfather that ever was, and that you are, so happy Father's Day. Thank you. 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 God bless you. Well, we have a little something we want to give out, but we need to know in the house, that if you had a dad kind of like these well-known dads that we've heard about, uh, maybe like Clint Eastwood, making my day. <laughs> Hold that hand up. Okay, the ones that's in the box, the ones in the box, Candy, that's the ones that go to any gentleman. Okay, yes. And we're looking for dads that uh, maybe Red Foreman in the 70s show. My hero. My hero. <laughs> Shout out, but that's your kind of dad. Come in with dad kind of like the one you may have had. I like this one, George Foreman. Every kid is named George Foreman. George, you know, like our guy. Uh, Richard Petty. He's a famous dad. Got that car going, mechanics, amen. There you go, there you go. And uh, the most famous one, Homer Simpson. <laughs> I know y'all are going to do it. Any other famous dads you know, shout them out. Not sure if they're the greatest role models, but we know who they are, right? They may be perfect or imperfect, but. <laughs> and uh, so that was just a few I thought of. Uh, um, I liked uh, the Rifleman, that dad, Chuck Connors. He's a great dad. Yeah, a good role model, amen. He Brezhnev liked it, so <laughs> you know who that is. Well, that's some of our famous dads. Well, we got some great dads in here today. Amen. Some new dads, some old dads, grandpas, grandpas, great grandpas. But we're looking for the youngest dad with the youngest child. And Candy, that's the one that's sitting to the left of the box. Right. Yes, ma'am. To the left, to the left. Yes. I don't care if we have more than one or two. The youngest dad, let's see, 20, 21. All right, we got 25. 26, 27, 28, 30, 30, 31, 31, are you 31 or 32? He's 32. He's 32, thank you. Like, you should know. I just don't remember, I got senior moments today. So we know Andy, <laughs> he's one of the youngest dads with a newborn child, he's what, a month old now? He's a month old. Andy is a dad. Yeah, Andy is a dad. Boy, that really does make me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're looking for the oldest dad. <laughs> um, me. Over 50, <laughs> over 60, over 70. You got one back in the back, 75. over 60. 75. We got two in the back, in the very back. 75. One twice, three times. <laughs> 70. We're close to 70. All right. 50 what? 69, there you go. 69. Who's the other one? Uh, these two Over gentlemen here, here Omar. 
Y'all, them two guys in the back, amen. They're all here somewhere. Yeah, he said Nick is 69. And Nick is. And Nick, Nick is 69. So to Kathy, the one that's back on the outside. I appreciate my wonderful helpers here too, this morning. We're looking for the oldest grandfather. That's kind of almost as old as that. Right, but a grandfather. Grandfather, oldest grandfather. Your grandkids? Yeah, raise your hands. Oldest grandfather with the most grandkids. Ten or more. <laughs> ten or more? Come on, bring them out. Ten or more. Bring it. We got ten. Ten, no. There you go. All right. How many we got? <laughs> ten, eight, ten. Ten, there you go. Got Leela, yes. And Mary, amen. Technically, yes. <laughs> we do. We have a lot. Don't ask baby. me what I mean by technically. You don't need to know that. <laughs> the oldest dad with the most grandkids and great grandchildren. Anybody got great grandbabies in here this morning? One on the way. One on the way. There we go. There you go. All right. Can't top that. No, why don't we? All ours are too young. <laughs> That right, Keep it that way. Keep that way. Long time. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> now, if you are a dad, or have a dad we home, would you ladies just pick up a bag of there and take them to every guy? All dads, raise your hand. All dads, come raise on. your hand. And if I have any helpers, come on down. No. <laughs> and don't leave them in the car too long. That's stepdad, it don't make no difference. Stepdad. Dad, stepdads, raise your hand. I'm blessed to have some of my. Our son's here today, and they're our grandchildren, amen. Yeah, we got a bunch of them in here. Oh, guys, amen. Find them, find them, find them. I've got plenty, amen. It's just a little token gift, nothing fancy. And you can dishwash them, and you can put hot and cold water in the uh, cup. But don't let them leave them in the car, because the items inside the cup can melt. Just a little token gift. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Amen. <laughs> did we miss? Did we miss anybody? We don't want to miss anybody. Yeah, I got plenty. Of, even in that big bag, I got a whole bunch more. I went shopping at the Dollar Tree. Got another limited supply. Limited supply right there. <laughs> now, this is little something, and we appreciate you guys. And uh, enjoy your special day. Did we miss anybody? In the back, make sure we got some in the back. I appreciate my ladies here helping us. Amen. To get it done. Amen. If you know any other that needs, you like to take one for your dad. I got some right there left. Amen. <laughs> I think we do. This is good. All right. Shout out to Miss Donna for putting all these together. <laughs> oh, glad to do it. Glad to do it. God bless you. Yes, we got more. <laughs> Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We praise the Lord this morning, our heavenly Father. All that He did for us, He gave His life for us. Amen. He supplies all our needs. So give our Lord a hand this morning, as well as all these dads. God bless you, each of you. We appreciate you so much. Amen. Well, this time, um, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Anna. All right, Miss Anna. Thank y'all. Look at your neighbor and tell him you're glad you're in the house today. I mean, glad you're in God's house today. Just throw it in there. Yeah, he got it. 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 Which one you want to do? Oh, what? Do this one. Okay. She said which one you want to do first. I'm like, the am like, I am. Oh, 31. I'm like, what's 41 going to look like? Yeah. Oh. I don't want to ask too much, but I didn't want to wish Shane felt a happy Father's Day. Yeah. It's the first one with a baby in the car. She's a doctor. I don't know who she is. She was her big sister. My baby's gotten fast.
crawl through my house and then laugh when they chase her. It's the cutest little thing I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, we're going to share a couple of songs this morning. Sing along. I hope they blessed your heart. I hope you enjoy them. Um, amen. Amen. Fighting for Susan from Mount Sweet, I'm not alone. We'll make up. He said, 
hashtag me bad as I want to be. This is the day I didn't blink an eye when I got a tattoo on my 18th birthday. When I dyed my hair purple and pink and red. She's like, whatever. All right. <laughs> That's my type of dad. Like, you come to church Sunday? All right, cool. Let's cool. Go. It's all right. All right. Uh, but this is, this is for our dad and, and then all the other dads in here that it gets heavy sometimes. It gets hard. It's, it gets impossible, but you still get up and you still do it. And, and we thank you for it. And, and when you look to your Heavenly Father, you know who's leading you, you know who's guiding you. That's how you do it. So if you forgot who your Father is today, I want you to remember it's God. It's That's Jesus right. Christ. He's leading you. He is your Father. And if you have Him as your Father, you can do anything. So no matter how hard it gets, which this song talks about, the struggle, look to Jesus. Okay. I'll try to Hasn't been a day of roses since I started on my way. Lord, you know I'm not complaining. There's just something I should say. For I preach
See, if y'all mess up, wouldn't nobody even know it. Oh, man. We will. We got a good, uh, good practice keeping a straight face when I got it wrong. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I'll give them a hand this morning. I really appreciate them. doing what they did for us today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wow. Well, I also noticed there's a lot of gentlemen out here that have little babies. We were very blessed here at Solid Rock Church. We've got all the ages. Amen. All on up. From Amen. newborn. A lot of newborn babies, little babies, sewn up, big toddler, big babies, and grown men. And they're still babies, right, ladies? Amen. <laughs> this time, it's rather like to come and give our scripture read this time. But a shout out to all our dads, and God bless you. And thank you, ladies. Yeah. Morning, church. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And in Clint Eastwood fashion, uh, Go ahead, make my day. <laughs> I love him. That's my hero. <laughs> I tell you, I think he's one of the true last men I think left on planet Earth, especially in Hollywood or anywhere in movie land. But uh, today is a special day, being Father's Day, because I'm going to tell you right now, fathers are definitely needed right now in our country, right now. And we need to make a stand, folks. Our, our dads and fathers, we have an important role in our, in our households. We're not only the protector and everything else. We have to give out discipline. And that's what's lacking in this nation right now. There are too many children out here without dads. And they have no discipline. And so we're seeing it in our streets right now. That's what we're seeing. So as a dad, you have a very important role in that household. Make sure that you stand up and be that man. Don't let it go. Because I'm telling you, those children remember what you tell them. Because I remember what my dad told me. My dad's been gone 21 years this year. He's in heaven. But I remember everything he told me when I was that big. Don't think that kids don't hear it. It's just like the church. You keep them in church. They might get away from church, but they remember that. And they will come back. I'm a, I'm a prodigal son standing right here. I can tell you that right now. So I know it works. We don't forget. We're not dumb people. We all have a brain. I remember everything he told me. Most of it was good. Some of it weren't too good. But I needed that. That's called discipline. That's called putting you in your place when you're the little guy. But we didn't forget. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't, be, I didn't become such a great person at all. I'm still trying to, to get there. There's nothing special about me at all. The only thing special about me right here is that I'm standing right here this morning. That's the only thing special about me. Because I could be in the same lifestyle I lived for years. I didn't even think about church. And I was raised right here in this church my entire life. So yes, you will come back. And you will not forget. Don't forget that, fathers. Lay it on the line or tell your children. Let them know. They need to know right from wrong. For everyone, please rise. I'm reading from Proverbs today, chapter 23. I'll be reading 22 through 25. I'm reading from the book. It's very short. Listen to your father who gave you life, and don't despise your mother's experience when she is old. Get the truth, and don't ever sell it. Also get wisdom, discipline, and discernment. The father of godly children have cause for joy. What a pleasure it is to have wise children. So give your parents joy. May she who gave you birth be happy. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Before we get into the message this morning, I want to 
clear up a little of the gossip that might be floating around this morning as to what is going on. Well, knock that right off, didn't I? Well, let me get this back. Yeah. Wanted to uh, clear up the rumors as to what's going on down the road. Um, basically, it, it, what we hear, they're raiding a meth lab. And one of the perps who was causing a lot of trouble was was allegedly by the last name of Cash. So just in case we get raided, I didn't do it. And we're definitely not cooking meth in here. You can look at me and tell I've been free basing country ham. Definitely not meth. Is it possible to freebase country ham? <laughs> if it is, I would actually like to try that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right, I better shut up before they watching live and they will come up here. Anyway, today, as you know, is Father's Day. And the Bible has a lot to say about dads. And if you're young, here are some verses of how your dad should treat you. If you're a dad, here's verses on how you should conduct yourself and so forth and so on. And the Bible has a lot to say about it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6, it says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. So first of all, the number one thing we need to remember on this Father's Day is God is the Father. He, he is the ultimate Father. He is the example for all of us to go by. In other words, the Lord shows we men how to be the right kind of Father. And it's time that we as men follow that. Instead of the popular trends that we are seeing dads following nowadays. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. You can tell it was a southerner that wrote that. <laughs> now, here's what this means. For us to follow God... As the ultimate father, the spirit of God must be inside of us. It is impossible to follow the example of the heavenly father if you don't belong to him. To, to be the right kind of father, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Here again, another classic example. God is always continually blessing his children. Dads, what are we? Are we a blessing to our children or are we a curse to our children? What are we? Are we a problem or are we something that they look forward to seeing coming in the door? If God the Father continually blesses his children, should we not at least endeavor to do the same? Malachi 2.10 have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? So why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant? Listen to this carefully. By profaning the covenant of our fathers. What we really need to do as dads is remember those who have gone on before us that set the example of what a real man is supposed to be like. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. That's a dying breed. It really is. 
Most of our forefathers would be very embarrassed to see what we have become. We, folks, we've lost our way. We've lost our perspective. We've lost our manhood. And we've become a nation of whiners. You want to know what the perfect example of a whining man looks like? Look at the Medicare commercial with Broadway Joe Namath on there. That makes me sick to my stomach every time that thing comes on and he's going, I want to get what I deserve. And I'm like, you know, what you want? Come on, man, quit whining. There ain't nothing worse than a whining man. There really isn't. There's nothing worse. And hollering about what you deserve. I'll tell you something. You know what? We don't deserve nothing. We need to earn what we have. People always act like, my daddy always told me, boy, the world don't owe you a living. And I knew exactly what he meant by that. It's, it, it's time to get back to being men again. To be a man is not easy. It's tough. It requires sacrifice. It requires blood, sweat, and tears. It really does, and it requires discipline. It's time to get back to being men again. Once we have a nation of real men again, can I get political? You doggone right. I got the microphone, so you're going to have to listen to me. <laughs> Once we have a nation of real men again, we won't see idiots like that up in our capitals anymore. We won't. They'll get that. A, a, a man, a, if a real man looked at that and go, that's what's supposed to be governing us? That's what's supposed to be our president? We need to get a we need to get sticks and pitchforks and, and torches and go up there and get them out of there. Instead of whining about their Medicare. Lord have mercy. John 14, verse 9 through 11. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? Jesus was God in the flesh. When he was here, he was the very embodiment of God. He in the flesh. Jesus is the Father in the flesh. Isaiah 64, 8, but now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, thou art thou our potter, and we are all the work of thy hand. I'm going to give dads another little assignment if you don't know about it. As a father, your job is to mold and form your children in what they are supposed to be. Let me say that again. It is your job, your job, to mold and form your children in what they are supposed to be. Now, I know the Freudian and the Jungian psychologist and what they've done to pretty much destroy the family, but they will look at you when, and when you think of doing that and they're going, you're going to hurt their individuality. Well, let me tell you something. My daddy hurt my individuality quite a few times when I was coming up. Fathers, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. Stop letting your children to grow up to be thugs and infidels. Amen. If you don't raise those children, the world will. And we're seeing that where the dads are so trifling and so lazy, they've let the world raise their children. And then they come crying, what did I do wrong? Well, you did everything wrong. You let the world raise your children. Now look at what we got. 52 genders now. People don't know what they are anymore. And you know who I blame for that? I blame the dads for that. You can't blame it on the school system. They're a bunch of communist perverts to start with. That's all they know is what the Secretary of Education tells them to say. They don't get their instructions from the school board. They need to get their instructions from daddy. That's the problem right now. 52 genders and the critical race theory where you're supposed to be ashamed of what you are. And now for the military, we've got stress cards with your platoon leader or your drill instructor 
says something out of the way, you can hold up a stress card. I'd like to see you hold that stress card up with about a thousand bullets a minute are whizzing over your head. You know what? The enemy could not give a rap's behind about your stress card. You need to be a man. It's what you need to be. Holding up a stress card. And because of the sorry dads that we have in this nation right now, we have safe spaces. My dad had what he called a safe space at home. It was called the gun cabinet. You got in trouble, that's where you ran for that. Safe spaces? Let me tell you, people don't care if you have a safe space. That's an easier place to kill you. You need to grow a backbone. And you need to stand up for your family. Instead of hollering, tell your family to run to their safe spaces. My father would have had a stroke if somebody told him that. <laughs> grow, listen to me, grow a backbone and then give one to your kids. That's what made America great was a spine, not a safe space. Somebody always worrying about getting their feelings hurt. Lord have mercy. Stick your head at the door for two minutes and you get your feelings hurt. You need to grow a thicker skin too. 1 Peter 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. As a dad, you need to teach your children that there is hope. A lot of kids are turning to all kinds of intoxicants because they don't think there's any hope. They don't believe there's any hope and they probably see you do it as well because you feel like you don't have any hope. You need to get the hope that is found in Jesus Christ and you need to tell your children there is hope and hope alone in Jesus Christ. Give them something to hope. James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. My father never gave me anything but good. Everything my daddy gave to me and taught me was for my good. Just as our Heavenly Father does. Everything the Lord gives you is good. So what are you giving your children? Dads, what are you giving them? Are you raising them to love Jesus? Or are you raising them to love the world? The world doesn't care about them. The world will drain them dry and leave them. What are you teaching them? What are you giving your children? As a father, listen to this. As a father, it is your duty, not somebody else's. It's your duty to give them an example to follow. If they follow you and end up in the pit, that's your fault. It is your duty as a father to give them a Christian home. My daddy did not send me to church. He took me to church. Every time when we, we went up the street, we went to church every Sunday, and my dad took me. and He made sure I went. Another thing my dad did, because I, I left home, let's see, I don't know about what age it was, but I'd come dragging in, not tell this, <laughs> two, three o'clock in the morning, and here was a conversation. My mom would still be awake. My dad, he was asleep because he was waiting in the morning for me. My mom would say, what in the world you think you're doing out this late at night? And I said, I'm a grown man. And she, <laughs> she'd say, you wait till you have kids of your own. You'll, you, you'll understand. I said, I will never do that. <laughs> I had to go and apologize to her five times, one for each kid, three or four times for Andy. <laughs> then my dad would get up in the morning, and I'd just gotten to sleep for a couple of hours. And there was a wall between my room and the kitchen. And he would take his fist and hit it three times. He didn't say a word. 
That meant you're going to get up, you're going to church no matter how tired you are because you're under my roof. And that's what he told me. I'd, I'd go walking like them people wearing masks going up in Walmart <laughs> like that to church. But I went and I stayed awake because he sat behind me. <laughs> so give him a Christian home. As a father, it is also your duty to give them a legacy and a name to be proud of. I remember back in the 70s, I went to a funeral of a relative who stayed drunk all of his life except the last two weeks before he died, and thank God he got saved then. And the little mousy pastor up there that was doing the funeral did not know him from Adam and was saying, we need to follow this man's legacy and this man's example of what a great father and husband he was. And I spoke up loud and I looked at my mom. She was sitting. I said, are we in the right funeral? She said, shut up. <laughs> She's had to shut me up a number of times. Oh my goodness. When you die as a dad, don't Expect the pastor to lie for you. Let him tell something that is a true legacy of what kind of a man you were because your children will know the difference anyway. Lying over somebody at the funeral ain't going to do them a bit of good, no way. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Teach your children forgiveness. That's really important. It really, really is important. You know, a lot of times you people will say, well, you don't know what so-and-so did to me. Doesn't matter. Look what they did to the Lord. And he forgave. Forgiveness is the name of the game for Christians. And if your children see you practice that, they will practice that as well. Now, Matthew 6, 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Dads, 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 feed your family. Feed your, I can't believe I'm saying that, that I have to say that. Feed your family. All I can tell you is growing up, I never worried for one moment when my dad was there because I knew he was taking care of everything and he did. My folks didn't have a lot of money, so daddy learned how to become an electrician, a plumber, and a mechanic. I've watched him do all of it. He never got anybody to come do anything. He did it all himself. And the house never burnt down, it never flooded. And the car always ran. And we always had plenty of food. And then when I grew up and found out how little my dad made, I wonder how in the world did they make it on that? Because I thought we had money. Because he took charge and took care. It, it, the name of the game, dads, is get out there and hustle. Yeah. Provide for your family. I mean, look at the bird. Anybody ever watched two birds raise their babies before? That is some work. They are flying, grabbing something, flying back, and they're doing that all day long until dark. I get tired watching them do that, but they're feeding their family. They really are. And if the birds know how to do it, what's wrong with us? There are so many deadbeat dads in jail right now because they would not take care of their family. And it is your responsibility to take care. No one, no one else is yours. So provide for your family so they don't ever have to worry about anything. I remember talking to Donna's daddy, the last conversation I had with him before he died. He was telling me, he, he had, I forget how many jobs he had. He worked for the city. He was a tree surgeon. He was also, he flipped houses and rebuilt those. And he also repaired cars and sold those. And he rarely had a moment to sit down. And he said, I'm doing this for Peggy, talking about her mom. He said, I want to make sure she never goes without anything, and I'm going to provide. And he took care of her. And was it easy? No, because it was hard for him as getting as old as he was to hustle like that. 
but he did because he wanted to provide. And I, that's what I've always remembered Johnny Burst from. And, and I take my hat off to that man. He was a great dad and a great husband. And mine was like that too. I watched my dad go out one winter morning. There was a foot of snow on the ground. And I've told it many, many times. He, he had a 51 Chevrolet pickup truck. That was his pride and joy. He went out and shoveled a path to that truck, jacked up the back of it, put chains on it, uh, shoveled the driveway out, and got in and headed to work with a 102 degree temperature where he was sick. And I said, Daddy, why in the world are you doing that? He said, because it ain't going to get done if I don't go out there and do it. That's old school. Oh, thank God for old school because that's why we're all sitting where we are because of some old school men. You know, I remember Jim Griggs' dad. Man, that was a man's man's man right there. You ain't never seen such a big man. And he was an electrician. And he was, and he was a wonderful, godly man, one of the toughest men I'd ever met. Of course, if he's bigger than Jim, he's got to be tough. He was over at the school one day after we bought it. And he was an electrician, but he didn't have any of his tools with him. And he was trying to determine the voltage coming out of the fuse box. So he did this. Oh, that's a 110. That's a 220. And it didn't do I mean, I was always in the admiration of that, but I ain't never tried that before. But he did it. Loved that man. He was a great provider. And he was a great husband and a father. And I've heard that from his whole family. Those are old school real men. And that's what America needs to get back to again. If we are ever going to make this nation worth a hoot any longer, we got to stop the whining and we got to stop the excuses and all the other stuff. And we need to understand what our family needs. Matthew 6.32 says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Know the needs of your family. What does your family need? Don't make them have to ask you to take care of them. That should be a given. That should be an understanding. If the birds know how to do it, then great day. We ought to know how to do it. Now, we're going to get we're going we're going to stop preaching and go to meddling here now. Matthew 15:30, but he answered and said, Jesus answered and said, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And this is something that really going to wear you out doing it, but it's got to be done. Fathers, it is your duty, your duty to root out the bad influences in the lives of your children. Number one, keep them from watching the wrong things. They don't need to sneak anywhere to watch nothing. All they got to do is turn this devil on. And there's a whole lot of children getting these things, quite frankly, that ought not be having. They really ought not because it's nothing but a door to the pits of hell. It's the truth and you know it. Keep them from watching the wrong things. Keep them from reading the wrong things and keep them from hanging out with bad influences. Root them out, Dad. You're not there to be their buddy. You're there to be their father. And if you got to put your foot down and say, no, you're not going there. You're not hanging out with those places. You're going to save their soul from hell is what you're going to do by being a little bit tough. Psalm 68, 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. There are many of you today that don't have a dad, an earthly father anymore. Some of you never have. And you know what? That's okay. I want you to know that the Lord himself can be your father. He is your heavenly father and he knows even better than a good earthly father what to do for you. And he will look out for you. He will care for you and he will help provide for you and he will be there for you when nobody else will. Talk to him. He's not dead. He's still alive. He's there and he hears your prayers. Let him be your heavenly father today. He will help guide you. He will show you in his word the things you need to do. And for all of you dads out there, you need Jesus 
more than you ever have in your life. So do I. We all need him desperately to know what is the right thing to do as a father. Right now we're looking at a whole lot of damage because dads did not step up to the plate. It don't matter how old you are, dad, you can still do the right thing. You can still make it right with your children. Heal those scars. Say the right things. And let the leading of the Lord be your guide as a dad today. I laid a lot of responsibility on y'all today because it's always been on me too, but that responsibility is from the word of God. I didn't make it up. I shared that with you is what we should do as dads. And once the dads get straight in this country, then everybody else will fall in line. It is you, dad, that will answer to God about how your family got raised and treated and provided for. You stand in and be accountable to him for that. And so it is important that you realize what a heavy responsibility <clears throat> it is to be a father and that you be willing to take that responsibility and walk with the Lord. Will it require sacrifice? Yes, it will. Absolutely. But it's worth it. When one day one of your children comes up and tells you that you made the difference in their life. It's incumbent upon each of us to, to be that way today. And so let's determine. Shall we stand? We're going to have a, a song of invitation for you to come and talk to the Lord about being the right kind of dad maybe. Maybe you need to go to your dad and thank him for what he did for you. Maybe you need to come and say, I need the Heavenly Father as my dad. I don't know what your situation is. But whatever the Lord's prompting you to do, would you come as Candy plays a song of invitation? <laughs>